Hi, welcome to Numeric's video blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Joining me today is Alex Marion, Vice President of Product Management here at Numeric's for insurance. Alex, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Uh, I want to uh, talk specifically around uh, variable annuities. Um, in terms of issuance, we've seen um, spikes come back to pre-2008 uh, pre and 2007 type levels and that upward trend uh, continuing. So from your perspective and, and regarding the companies that you work with, where would you say we are as it relates to the de-risking of products uh, and the state of the state within the variable annuities industry? Well, I think uh, it's sort of like a pig in the python thing. We've, companies have done a lot of de-risking. Uh, last year they had actually offered buyouts for some of these guarantees um, and they continue to um, sort of dial down different levers they have of controlling how rich these benefits are. They're lowering withdrawal rates, they might be increasing fees, and um, really they've been focused on um, managing the risk inside the funds using target volatility strategies, capital protection strategies, and so forth. And that's, that really was the trend over the last two years. Um, in fact, some companies last year even got out of the VA market completely, um, like Sun Life, Hartford. So um, a lot of the de-risking is still going on. Um, there is some pickup in sales for some of the more uh, conservative offerings, but really the growth has been in the fixed index annuity market. Uh, those sales last year, I think, hit another record around $34 billion uh, for index annuities, and there's been a lot of innovation in some um, index annuity designs that mirror some of the features you would normally see in a variable annuity product. So in thinking about lessons learned, right, right? so we, you know, we had a boom in terms of the products. What has fundamentally changed since 2007? Because we did see a lot of losses. Well, I think really it was the credit crisis and sort of a mispricing of, of, of risk. Uh, a lot of the original uh, market participants, you know, offered very, very rich benefits, high roll-ups, things like that. Uh, they didn't anticipate the 2008 credit crisis, um, and their hedging programs weren't nearly as sophisticated as they were today. Uh, and so the push has really been, and it's, the other thing too is the uh, regulatory environment has changed considerably. Um, new regulations, whether it's reserves or capital, um, are more demanding for uh, variable annuity riders. So they've got to uh, sort of balance this consumer demand, this increasing consumer demand for retirement security, while on the other hand, they have increasingly stringent uh, regulatory requirements that um, place more emphasis on, uh, on their hedge strategies. Uh, companies now have to, uh, under AG43, which has been coming on for a while, they have ORSA coming on in 2015, and in Europe you have Solvency II coming on in 2016. So these new regulations are coming down the pipeline, they're placing more demands, um, which is adding pressure to sort of the, the variable annuity de-risking process. But there are uh, capital relief uh, in some of those uh, regulations. Sure, there is. Uh, companies that have uh, analytics that are capable of projecting their, their hedging strategy forward, um, com companies who have a clear, what's called a clearly defined hedging strategy, uh, can actually lower their AG43 reserves by simulating their uh, hedges going forward. Um, additionally, companies that have uh, ability to um, identify different hedging strategies through hedge projection um, are able to allocate capital more efficiently across different product lines. So in terms of, of technology, right, so, you know, obviously the world has changed, we're, we're driven by the consumerization of, of IT, and, you know, the actuarial sciences, as you are an actuary well, are, are pretty well defined and advanced. What is fundamentally changing uh, in terms of of the underlying modeling and, pro and how is that impacting product design? Well, I think, you know, insurance companies, their bread and butter has always been um, actuarial modeling, you know, mortality, uh, policyholder behavior. They've got a lot of data on that. They're using predictive analytics, and that's really what their focus has been. Um, as far as uh, managing equity risk and interest rate risk, that's been a sort of a new development in the last decade for insurance companies. Traditionally, they were, you know, a, a spread shop that was focused on managing the actuarial assumptions. So. A lot of companies are still looking to hedge out a lot of that equity risk or at least move some of the hedging into the underlying funds themselves and focus again on policyholder behavior uh, on their actuarial assumptions. That's really where they want to be making their margins. But also traditionally um, a lot of the asset side of the business has been outsourced. Sure. Um, do you see any trends as that's coming back more into housing Indeed, and it, investment? Indeed, yes. Uh, sure. In, you know, when the VA market was much younger, they were uh, outsourcing was um, typically the, the way insurance companies are processed. Back then, they didn't have the analytics and the technology infrastructures to support uh, dynamic hedging programs. You know, they needed a trading desk, they needed quantitative models, uh, risk neutral economic scenario generation capabilities. A lot of the bigger insurance companies, even the smaller shops now, have those capabilities. They've built out teams 
of quants who uh, can do the risk neutral modeling. So they're able to do some of the hedging themselves. They may not be trading themselves, but they're starting to bring that in-house now that they have the tools to do so. Um, so that's been really uh, moving away from outsourcing, um, you know, moving some of the risk management into the funds, and then uh, taking additional responsibilities in-house. Well, Alex, thank you so much. And of course, we want to hear what you have to say. And please feel free to uh, engage with us on Twitter at NX Analytics, or follow all of our updates on LinkedIn for upcoming webinars and, and programs and events that we're hosting. And Alex, thank you so much for sure, your time today, you. and we'll talk to you soon.